Hello and good day to you, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Solomon Izang Ashams. I am, uh, what, how should I even introduce myself? <laughs> I'm a father. Uh, I'm a lover of the church. I'm a lover of pastors. I'm a lover of prophets. I'm a lover of truth. And I just feel that we need to do things the right way, especially the church. So on Solomon's Temple, the platform, we get to talk about issues that is related, affecting, or somehow influences the church. So most of the issues that I'm going to be bringing up here, that's what it is. I'm a journalist um, and also uh, I do quite a lot of that. I started in radio, so I've been in radio uh, for a while but now I do quite a lot of digital media. So thank you so much for joining me wherever you are. It's a pleasure to have you at this time of the day. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, wherever you are, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, people, I see Ati. Ati said, always watching from Namibia. Thank you all the way from Namibia. Uh, I know there's quite a lot of people that, that watch uh, you know, from overseas and uh, different places. So please start people, share this with people. And I also would want to encourage you uh, to uh, please, uh, what do you say? Please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, that's what I would need to do. Subscribe right now. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That's what we, we have to do. Share it with people. Make sure you follow me on uh, Facebook. This is my Facebook name there, Solomon Izang Ashams. You can follow me up there. And also you can uh, follow me up on, on YouTube, Solomon's Temple. Do not forget. And you can also make sure you follow me either on Instagram or you can follow me anywhere. Yes, you can see Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Solomon Ashams. That's what we have to do, and that's where you can follow me. So I see quite a bit of people coming in right now. Uh, Afi uh, Sipa is saying it's from the Eastern Cape. Uh, thank you, Sipa, from the Eastern Cape. Uh, the Great David, all the way from Phoenix in Durban, KwaZulu Natal province. And then we have Comfort Aboba Day. Yeah, I think I should. Yeah, yeah, childhood, childhood, uh, we grew up together, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> a son and very, very, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Namibia is still in the house. So thank you, guys. I really appreciate every one of you. Now, quickly, I'm going to do this uh, short and sweet. I'm going to be talking about Johnson Suleiman's, uh, Johnson Suleiman brag about his third private jet. We all know uh, Johnson Suleiman. I'm sure a lot of you guys that are here now, you have some sort of like idea who uh, Johnson Suleiman, he calls himself Apostle Johnson Suleiman. I'm not sure if he's, a, he, for me, he's not an apostle, you know? Um, and he just claimed that he bought his third private jet, private jet number three, right? private jet number three. You know, there's a video where he said, I bought my third private jet during COVID-19, Apostle Suleiman boasts. So it was kind of like boastful sharing that he just bought his, not private jet number one, not private jet number two, but private jet number three. His third private jet, right? He runs a church called Omega Fire Ministries in a place in a small city called Auchi uh, in Edo in the southern part of Nigeria. Now, if you go to Auchi as a city, this is the kind of things that you see. Poverty. A lot of problems. This is just outside an institution, education institution. People cannot go use the bridge the way that you should. They have to, you know, support themselves using the rail to go across. 
This is the same city that Johnson Suleiman operates from. Now, for a lot of people, they would be asking the question, so what if a man of God buys a private jet or buys his uh, third private jet? Uh, it's his money. It's none of your business. Do you think so? Do you really think so? Do you really think it's none of our business to hold our leaders accountable? Do you really think it's his money? Do you think if Johnson Suleiman stops being a pastor today, you think he's going to get the money to even buy a Royce to even buy a Rolls Royce? Do you think it is okay for uh, prophets and pastors and prophet and apostles to be buying private jets? in a country that is the poverty capital of, Ni of the world called Nigeria, where you see extreme poverty, where a, a nation that is so corrupt, do you think it is okay? Are we leading by example? What does it mean to sacrifice, to lay down your life for others? To lay down your life for others, my friends, means that when I have money to buy a private jet, I would buy maybe a Mercedes-Benz instead and use that money to help other people, to help my community. That's the reality of the gospel that a lot of people don't want to hear. So if you see any pastor in Nigeria he's claiming right now to owe a private jet, something is wrong with that pastor and that bishop. That's my conclusion. Because, not because Nigeria, not because a pastor or a bishop should not buy a private jet, but because Nigeria is impoverished. Some of you that have no, not been to Nigeria, you have no right to even, you know, defend this. And some of you that are in Nigeria and you're defending it, you are just a part of the corruption and mismanagement that has dilapidated our nation. I tell people that in Nigeria, there is no church, no church in Nigeria. I said, but there are big churches, 80,000 people, Sita, big churches, big, ch it's not the building. If there is a church in Nigeria, we're going to feel the impact of the church in our communities, in the hospitals that we have, the schools that we have, the roads, there's going to be clean water for people. But there's none. So for me, there is something wrong with that. Well, what did Johnson Suleiman says precisely after he came out to claim that he has bought a private jet. This is what he said. I want us to go through exactly his words, what he said in that video when he said, I bought my third private jet during COVID-19. I want us to, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to play the video uh, because I don't want to play their stuff. Uh, so I'm going to show you word by word, what he has said around this issue. And this is what he said. Here on, on a Thursday, a video surfaced online. In the video, he said, in COVID pandemic, I bought a jet. The third one, I have three. I was praying for COVID-19 not to end because I was resting. Can you believe it? <laughs> praying for COVID-19 not to end because you were resting. So you're praying that people will continue to die, people will continue to get infected because you are resting. While people were complaining, my wife asked, can life be this sweet? Am I talking to, am I talking to, uh, no stress? What does what it say there? I can't see it from my side. I read on the internet that there's a rumor going around that I have a machine that prints money. I like that rumor. They say he should be investigated. He has a machine that prints money. Somebody asked if it's true, and I said, it's true. They said it's risky. I said, I didn't know it's risky because I already bought the machine. When you speak in tongues, you are printing money. So, <laughs> So there are two things that I want us to notice here. First, he's saying, secondly, he's here he's saying, when you speak in tongues, you're printing money, right? And then firstly, here he said, uh, I was praying for COVID-19 not to end because I was resting. So you were praying for COVID-19 not to end. 
This is the same person that said COVID-19 is actually from the devil and is connected to the 666, triple six, whatever. Because you were resting, because you were being blessed in the midst of COVID-19, you bought your third private jet. Now you have three private jets. That in itself leaves quite a lot of question marks around the leadership that you could be that boastful. It was a video, he said that publicly in his church, he said that publicly. And you have people who would sit down and listen to, hit, to him and shout, amen, right? Hallelujah, that God has blessed them, gullible people. I don't have a problem with, with apostles or pastors or bishops buying private jets or whatever, but not in Africa, not in Nigeria, to be honest with you. Maybe when you are in a country like Japan or the USA or France or the UK, where the poverty level, the standard of living is so high, where the government is able to take care of people, where at least people can get free education, free, free medical assistance and free whatever they need. But in a country where there's so much poverty, that's not the gospel. What would Jesus do in that situation? You think if Jesus was, a, was around today, he would owe three private jets? And it leaves so much to be desired, to be honest with you. If we continue to praise and to acknowledge and to condone pastors and apostles and bishops who buy private jets, who buy Rolls Royce, who buy big houses, and they brag about it, and we shout amen, we are part of the problem here in Africa. We are part of the leadership problem. We are part of the corruption problem. To be honest, we are part of the moral problem in our continent. If Johnson Suleiman steps away from being a, an apostle or pastor today, you think he's going to get the money to do what he... A lot of these pastors and prophets, if they step away from being pastors, you think they're going to be able to get the money? No. Because they get the money through the people. Even if they do a bit of businesses, they get the network for doing business through the people. So you are custodian. Where we where we found ourselves in Africa right now is we have to make huge sacrifices to be able to fix Africa to a certain level. We can never eradicate all the problems of Africa. And some people would say, well, the problem of Auchi, where Suleiman is from, is not really should be his problem. It should be the government, the problem of the government. That's not true. You think the government are going to be the ones to solve your problems? The hope of a country, the hope of a city is not in the, on the shoulders of the government. It's on the shoulders of the church. So, but if we keep acquiring, 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 I'm getting a private jet for myself, I'm buying a Rolls Royce for myself. What sort of example, when it comes to leadership, are we showing to those who are outside of the church? Let's, let's look at what, because this became a huge social media conversation. And let's look at what some people were actually saying about the fact that Suleiman could come out and boast that he bought his private jet number three. And he wishes that COVID doesn't come to an end. And he says when he prays in tongues, he prints money. Let's hear what, you know, it was a big issue in Nigeria. Let's hear and read what some uh, people were saying on social media. This is Tosin on social media says, when you speak in tongues, you are printing money because that's what Suleiman said. No emotions or euphoria or an attempt to convince the worshippers should make any man of God utter such a statement. That's bastardization of the gospel of our Christ. The first Apostle Suleiman meeting I attended was my last. 
very clear there. Here's what uh, 15 Cent said. He said, but Apostle Suleiman's word on COVID aside, what's a pastor using three private jets for? Is he trying to own an airline or fly all his members to heaven? <laughs> That's a bit funny. Because you have to make sense of it. Why should you own three private jets? You, okay, you fly, you want to go save people in Italy, you want to go save people in, in Vietnam, you want to go face, save people. No, you're not the only one called to save people. How about you pray that God would raise people there to save the people there? Witcher said, always thought Apostle Suleiman was a fraud. Though, wasn't he the same person who was talking about the COVID vaccine being the mark of the devil and the Pope sacrificing Italy or something? That it contains signals to control the human body. How do humans take that man seriously? Yeah, there are certain men of God, we shouldn't take them seriously. And this guy here called Daddy Gio says, God ignored those dying during the pandemic, but answered Apostle Suleiman monetary prayers. What a selective God. Indeed, what a selective God. People are dying. People died from COVID, praying to God to save them, to answer them. Because of COVID, people have lost their their bodies is not functioning the way that it should, even though they had recovered. But God didn't answer their prayers. But he went to Auchi in the south part of Nigeria and answered the prayers of a person called Suleiman, who was praying for a third private jet. What a selective God. And you think the prayers of Suleiman is more powerful than the prayer of a housewife infected by, 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 by COVID or a nurse infected by COVID, then that is a lie. A big lie. We have to get our priorities right. Didi says, Apostle Suleiman is not your God. Your pastor is not your God. They are both human. God is supernatural. God is supreme. No God for yourself. Very important. We have lift up men of God to a place of being God. A man of God is not a God. And we don't even know that we are treating them and worshiping them as God because of the way they have programmed our minds and because of the way we are so gullible. We have lost the fact that we, that we, we should step back and see things. We don't even want to criticize them. It's not a sin to criticize. It's not a sin to judge. Go read your Bible. To judge is not a sin. To criticize is not a sin. Go read your Bible. You will see it there. But to condemn is a sin. When you judge to condemn somebody, then that's what it becomes a sin. And if we don't criticize, we're not going to be able to know what is right and what is wrong. And that's what criticism is all about. Because you're searching for what is right and what is wrong. You remember when you're growing up, your parents would tell you, don't go, don't be friends with this person because they're going to influence you wrongly. They just judge your relationship. And sometimes you're like, ah, but why shouldn't I be friends with them? But they judge the character of this person you want to be friend with. And that was why they are advising you to stay away from them. And it's a truth. It's a truth.
All right, so you're still there, right? Osage, sorry for the break in transmission, guys. Uh, Osage is saying someone, pastors, geos, bishops are taking the place of Jesus Christ and God the Father to say it. So they talk, act, and portray, them, and portray themselves as one. Can you imagine Jesus Christ bragging about his private jet? Good question there. Can you imagine? Guys, can you see me and hear me? <laughs> because uh, I had some internet uh, hiccup. So I went off and on. Can you see me and hear me? Can you give me, yes, you can see me and hear me. Can you just write it up so I can, I'll be sure that you can see and hear me. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Parsi. Five five. Thank you, Reverend Bill. So we 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 have a situation here where because we do not question things, certain men of God has got to a level where they brag, where they would now make you think that God is blessing them. And if you want to be part of the blessing, you need to connect to them. And we have totally dislinked the way that we evaluate things. Please, guys, critique things. Anything you hear from a man of God, or any, oh, not even a man of God, everybody, crit critique it. It means you evaluate it, criticize it. If you don't agree with it, say, I don't agree with it. I'm going to play you an audio. I'm going I'm to play you an audio. Uh, that is precious is saying I'm gone again. Is that true? Can you <laughs> can you see and hear me? I'm sure I'm still here. I think the problem should be from your side, precious. But guys, can you see and hear me? If you can see and hear me, let me, it's okay. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. All right, precious. Okay, precious. All right. So I'm going to play you a video, you know, that is, that was made by, by a Nigerian who lives in Japan. After Apostle Suleiman came out last week and boasted about acquiring his third private jet, this Nigerian who, who's who been living in Japan for a long time now became so angry, you know, and made this video that actually went a bit viral. Uh, and he, he shared so many truths. He shared so many truths from the side of Nigeria as a nation to the church, to men of God, to why Africa is the way that it is. So I'm going to play you that I'm going to play you that video uh right now. Uh please watch the video but importantly listen to what he has to say because the video is just a video of you know the roads in Japan. So he's reside he's residing in Japan. He has a PhD in theology and he is also a lawyer. Right? So I'm going to play you the video now, just so, because uh, I see we're having some internet issues, just so we can bring this to a close after this. Please watch this video and listen to it carefully. It's about seven minutes. My dear Pastor Suleiman, you bought first jet, bought second jet, and the, you bought another third jet during coronavirus. And where people are dying. Pastor Suleiman, I want you to look around here. This is Japan. I want you to look around. The people you said that they don't know God. Look at the environment. Just take a look. You have three private jets. Why Awuchi is one of the dirtiest places in the world. Why Nigeria is one of the poorest places in the world. And you bought, you have mind to buy the first jet, second jet, and the third jet. 
during Corona when people are dying? Eh? What is wrong with Nigerians? When will our mumu do? I'm asking this question. Eh? This man, are, this man are just deceiving people. I am sorry to say that, but it's the truth. Pastor Suleiman, I just want you to look around. Look around people you say that they don't know God. Look around people that you call infidels that they don't understand. If you call it, if you call Jesus to a Japanese man, he will ask you, Nami, what is it? Eh? Yes, or someone, I need a scar. Is, uh, you talk to him about the heaven. He said, Nani heaven. What is that? What even is heaven? Because these people understood the truth. Why we are brainwashing our people that they are going to heaven to enjoy what they can enjoy here? That is the most wicked thing I've ever seen. The black people are asking, why, 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 why are our people very wicked? We can't even help ourselves. We go to China to borrow money. And during coronavirus, when people are dying, no food. I and my family had to spend money, send the money that the government of this country gave us to send to Nigeria, to my town and my village, to buy palliative for them and to buy medicine. And you bought, your, you used your own money to buy private jet. Pastor Suleiman, shame unto you. Sometimes when you people are talking, you think that you people are talking to idiots. My name is Barista Mecca Akonis. I'm speaking from Japan. I just want you to look around to the to look around you this country. Each and everybody you see, everyone you see here is five times richer than you. But nobody, nobody has a private jet. Even Toyota is richer than Nigeria. Mrs. Bucci is richer than Nigeria. Sumitomo Bank is richer than Nigeria. And you people are there deceiving yourselves in the name of God, deceiving people in the name of God. What is happening to my people? It's time for us Africans to wake up from this, from this mental slavery of wrapping our brain with something that is not real. We, 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 start, we, we, we live in, at least in one land. Look at the country that they don't have they don't have oil, they don't have gas, they don't have anything. All you will tell me is our leaders. Who elected those leaders if it's not you people? I think it is time for us to understand the truth. Pastor Suleiman, you have got to come out of the social media to tell people that coronavirus, you are praying that it will not end because of your selfish and stupid interest. Do you think you talk to fools? You think that everybody is brainwashed? You think that this mental slavery affects everybody? You are nobody but a, a, a motivational speak, a motivational speaker. Most of you, most of the people that are doing your job in America, in Canada, they are there. And you use your own against to the detriment of your people. Look at your congregation. Look at the people coming there. Look at them. Where are they from? Look around. See there where they are living. And you have gone to buy the first jet, the second jet, and the third jet, and 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 you you have the, the audacity to come to the social media to talk rubbish and trash. I don't blame you. Is it where you are dressing like a, the Joker? You wear you wear multi colors like a like a fool. Your right, your right, your you, the color of your right suit is different from the color of your right left suit. The Joker, you are just a Joker. I am surprised I'm totally disappointed and it's time to face the fact and talk sense into you, 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 this empty heads which you are using to, to brainwash African people. Is it not a shame that you are driving pretty private jets when people are dying of hunger in Nigeria when there's no single road? Look at how see how it is. This place is a village. I am telling you this road you see now is village. Because if I take you to Tokyo or Nagoya or Osaka to see what's happening there, you will faint. I think it's time for us to begin to speak out. Because when you speak, they say, who are you to talk against the man of God? Stop that rubbish of man of God. Man of nonsense. Stop that rubbish. It's time for us to face the truth. There's no man of God here in Japan. Look at their country. Everybody respects the law. Everybody knows knows what to do at, at, at every given time. 
It's a disciplined country. A country that has the fear of God. Not the type of God you people are talking in Nigeria. I am fed up with all this nonsense. And it's time to speak sense into your brain. My name is Emeka Kolisa. I'm a Lego practitioner. And a PhD in theology. And that is why I have the right and to speak to these people who so-called themselves men of God. I study theology more than most of them. And look at them. One year, two years, they, they read the Bible and now they took my, they take microphone and come out to the public to deceive the public and the crowd. I blame Nigerians for not using their brain. How many churches? You can't even see a church in Japan here. But look at their country. God's own country. Look at it. Everything is, is, is fine-tuned like, like it's from heaven. Everything is fine-tuned. And everybody obeys the law. What is happening to us? I'm asking. Can't we use our brain and our senses? You bought, you bought, you bought, you bought private jet during coronavirus. You pray coronavirus, you know. Look at your mouth. Nara. I think it's time for us to speak out. When we continue to speak out, this man will go and do their homework very well. Because they think that anybody who comes on the, on the, on the, on the podium with microphone can speak to, 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 to stupid fools that have brainwashed. Nigerians are raising wise men and intelligent men. And it's time for us to stand against this rubbish. Did you hear anybody blowing horn here? Pull, pull, move. No. Because everybody is disciplined. Everybody is disciplined. They know what to do at the right time. You, you bought Fedri Jet. You were doing coronavirus. When I saved money here to send to my the town for them to buy palliative. Shame. Nonsense. There you go. You know, when I listen to that, it just breaks my heart. And I could connect to a lot of things he was saying. In as much as I do not agree with some of the... Uh, he, I, he, I, I understood he was angry, but you should not get personal and begin to attack the way the man of God dresses. You know, I don't do that. I would disagree with your issue, with the issue, but I'm not going to, you know, get personal on these things. Uh, and a lot of you guys here, you get personal, you begin to attack me, you begin to attack everything. That's not how you debate. You're not my enemy, I'm not your enemy. Suleiman is not my enemy. But the truth that he shared there, what have we become? You buy three private jets and you're boasting about it. You're praying that corona, you're wishing and hoping that corona doesn't go away. The COVID-19 virus. We, have we become so ineffective with our, main, with our minds and with our brains that these people would come and... Some people are even saying, well, he's his money. He can do whatever he wants to go with it. You that are saying that you have a big problem. You don't understand what leadership is. And you don't understand what Christian leadership is. So you have to see leadership through the eye of Jesus. Then you would understand that <clears throat> it's not his money. It's God's money. Even if you work hard for it, he blesses you with it. But he wants you to use it in certain ways. So we really need to sit down and ask ourselves, what have we become? Are we going to be tolerating? Are we going to be celebrating when a man of God buys a private jet, when he buys a house, when he buys... And, and because they know that we're celebrating and we're not using our brains to think and they're using that to get us to think they are powerful people, they are wealthy people, they have money, they keep flaunting it, make videos on social media, they put it out there because they know there are gullible and naive people like you that would believe and say, this is the blessing of God. No, this man is a man of God. Because you are three private jets, then you think it's a conclusion for me now that you are truly a man of God. No, I'm sorry. Private jet doesn't, doesn't say anything about you as a man of God. There are people who are atheists, people who are Muslims that have 10 private jets, people who don't even believe in God, people who are, who are Buddhists, 
Scientologists. They don't believe in Jesus. They are private jets. So, we're going to have false prophets and fake pastors for us for the rest of our lives. We're not going to stop them. I'm not trying to stop anybody, no. I'm just trying to liberate people. I'm just trying to educate people. I'm just trying to speak the truth. Just so when you decide, when you allow the Holy Spirit to help you, you will begin to see them differently. And you would embrace the truth and you make your decision not to believe in them anymore. That's what it is. You're, not, you're never going to stop false prophets. And I'm not even in the business of stopping false prophets, please. <laughs> It's not my role. I'm in the business of speaking truth. And you cannot tell me not to share my truth. You can disagree with you all that you want. That's fine. Some people saying he's feeding thousands. Like who is saying here that, uh, that the guy is feeding thousands of people weekly. So what if you're feeding thousands of people? He's paying kids to send them to schools. Why are you feeding people? Why are you sending kids, you're paying kids' school fees to school instead of building schools? How many schools have you be, has he built? Build a school and make it free for kids to go to, just like the missionary di missionaries did when they came to Africa. You're feeding people. How much does it take to feed people? Taking kids to school? My family and I are paying for... a for a girl to go to school right now. We've been doing that since last year. So don't tell me about, you know, paying for, you know how much Suleiman might be worth about $50 million. And then he uses just 500,000 to feed people or to pay school fees for kids out of that 50 million. And then you think is right, right? Then you think is right. No, it's never right. It can never be right. We're Christians. We're, we're called to give more of ourselves, more of our resources. We see them saying, I just bought a private jet. I bought, just bought a car. Amen. Hallelujah. And you keep becoming more gullible and never use your brain. That's the problem. So please share this with your family. Share this with your friends. Keep praying for your families and friends who still follow this men of God who are not doing what is right. Nothing personal with Suleiman. I, I don't get, I don't twist things personal. I deal with issues, not, pers not personal. I can never call Suleiman stupid, foolish, you know, whatever. No, then I'm taking it to a personal level because God created him or, or, and all the other men of God Bushiri and all those, I can never get to a level where I call them foolish people or stupid people. No, 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 no. Don't do that. That's not how you, you process things and, and deal with things. Deal with the issue. And somebody said he, he feeds people. Is he Sometimes they will come and feed people with church money and you think it's their money. So you think the church money belongs to the pastor? You see how they play with your mind. You don't even know when they're using church money and when they're using their money. And most of the time they use church money. And who told you he used his own personal money to buy that private jet? Who told you there's no church money to a part of it? From his first private jet to his second private jet and to his third private jet. You think he used the money, just his own, his own money. What kind of business is he involved in? Go check what kind of business he's involved in. Shama is saying uh, that first I should investigate people you talk about because uh, I see you really don't know him. What do you mean I really don't know him? I have this guy's phone number. This guy knows me. He knows me. I've been investigating him for a long time. 
What business? Let him come out and tell us what sort of business he's involved in. We built universities in Nigeria where, you know, even the church members cannot even send their kids to. But we use the church's money, Christians' money, to build universities. But then we, the Christians cannot even send their kids. If the missionary had done the same, the missionaries have done the same thing with the schools they came and, and put on here. Do you think some of our parents would even get education? For them to be even to for them to then later on even try to send us to school to get education? No, never. So please stop with that mentality. Please, guys, share this and um, tag people so they would get to. We continue with the conversation. Thank you so much for uh, being with me. Uh, now, please make sure you subscribe. I, I would want you to subscribe, please. When you subscribe, make sure you click on the bell. So anytime I upload uh, a video on YouTube, you're going to get some sort of a notification. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, keep praying for me. Tomorrow, uh, my attorney and advocate go before the judge. Uh, people are praying. Uh, pray for, you know, God's will to be done. You know, some people say, no, we want to pray for you not to go to prison. If it is God's will for me to go to prison, I will go to prison. And I'm not going to be afraid of going to prison. If it is not God's will for me not to go to prison, with my case with Alf Lukau, then I would not go to prison. That's why it's always more important to pray God's will, not my will, not your will. You know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And that's what we should be praying. And I thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the so many people who have been given. I appreciate it. And God bless you. And um, have a wonderful day.